Number 19. Number 19. Oh, my God.
Let's pray to God. God, our Heavenly Father, we indeed come before you beseeching you that you truly give us a clean heart, that you help us to have the right spirit. 
that we keep the Holy Spirit within us, that we work so hard to be more like Christ every day, that we show the love of Christ every day, that we are willing to encourage others to come to to you, to come to know your son, Jesus. Father God, it is such a challenge in this world now, the things that cause us to doubt, that cause us to fear, that cause us great sorrow, cause us great pain. Father, often when things go wrong, so many in the world blame you for everything that's going on. When we really need to keep ourselves focused on it's it's the sin of man, it is the fallen creation that causes such troubles as plagues, death, sickness, wars, man's inhumanity to man. Father, we pray that each one of us will strengthen our faith, that we will grow to love you more, that you will help our unbelief, that our faith will grow, our love for you grows as we seek to keep your commandments. We know, Father, that we have simply to follow your will, to be in obedience to you, to humble ourselves before you, to place all of our trust and faith in you. We know that we can receive encouragement from one another. We know that you have asked us to sing songs of praise to your great and high and holy name, but also to encourage one another in our songs and our hymns and our spiritual songs. And we pray, Father, that our acts of worship this day have been pleasing to you and an encouragement to our brothers and sisters in Christ, not only here, but throughout the world. Father God, this congregation works so hard to serve our community, to serve the members of the congregation to help spread the gospel and not only here in this community, but throughout the world. And we ask your blessings upon the men who lead this congregation. For the new opportunities that present themselves to us every day, blessings upon the the education and the new school, Bless us upon those who are willing to teach and give of their time to make that a success so it is uh, a great and tremendous opportunity for our children to grow and to to not only grow in their wisdom of the world's knowledge, but in the spiritual knowledge that they need to have. Trust and faith in you. Father God, as we continue today, may all of our focus be upon the great sacrifice that was made on our behalf through your son Jesus Christ and his sacrifice upon the cross for us. We know that through him we have hope of eternal salvation and only through him. We ask, Father, that you help us to love you more, to follow your commands every day, And this is our prayer in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll be reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. 
There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear down and to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time for love and a time for hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Number 330. 330. This morning, as we prepare our minds to take the Lord's Supper, we'll sing the first verse before the taking of the bread and the second verse before the taking of the cup. Number 330. <laughs> Is there anyone that didn't have an opportunity to grab a communion cup from the back? Pray with me. Father, as we gather around your table in remembrance of your son, may we partake of this bread which represents his body that was broken for our sake and the sake of the world on the cross. Let us do this in a manner well-pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Father. In a like manner, as we partake of this fruit of the vine that represents your son's blood that was spilled to wash away our sins, that was given so freely and with so much love, let us take it with remembrance of Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. And separate from the Lord's table, each week we are called to make a contribution of a small amount that reflects how we've been blessed. Please bow with me as we ask for blessings over the contribution. Father, help us to not depend on our own will but to bend to yours. Help us to be cheerful givers. Help us to look at the world and see how we can apply the blessings that we've been given to help others. And as we give today, Lord, please be with our decision makers and our, our elders to see that these monies are put towards what is most needed and where most help can be given. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number 790. 790. <coughs> Sing no one trust for what Jesus sing his mercy and his grace in the today. We appreciate everyone's presence so much, especially those who are visiting with us. I want to invite and encourage you to come back and be with us at every opportunity you have. You know, there's a sad note about our modern society. 
if it gets to be the least bit difficult, just quit. Now, we've got two football coaches in here. And I'm sure they start off with a whole passel of young men in the beginning of August. But by the time football season gets around, they don't have near as many as they used to have. Last seven weeks, since we're on a seven-week program now, I had two students that were making solid Bs going into the final two weeks of school. They did not turn in two assignments, and both of them wound up failing simply because they quit. Well, let me say bluntly, that's not a Christian attitude. That's not an attitude you and I need to have. In fact, in the long ago in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10, Solomon said, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Put yourself into it in every way you can. Okay, we live in a very discouraging world spiritually. There's times it's tough to be a Christian. There's all kinds of pressures out there and everything else. And there are certain things that you and I as Christians need to just simply keep on doing because that's what God wants us to do. Among these is pray. We need to keep on praying no matter what. In Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, Jesus gave a parable. And it said that men ought always to pray and not to lose heart. You know, in our society, ask one time and you're supposed to get it. You know, kind of like McDonald's. No, God's definitely not McDonald's. And there are times we need to pray and pray and pray. In fact, as you go into this parable, the woman that Jesus illustrates with kept going and kept going and kept going. And finally, the landowner was so aggravated, he finally gave in to her request. Now, let me say, our prayers don't aggravate God. But we need to just keep on keeping on in prayer. Because we don't know when just maybe the next time we ask is going to be the time that God responds. In James 5.16, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So we keep praying. Even when it seems like our prayers are not being answered, we keep praying. Secondly, we keep praising. You know, it's easy when we get discouraged, when times get hard. As has already been said in the course of this service today, people want to blame God. It's his fault. God did this. God did that. You know, again, a quality of our modern society is we don't assume responsibility for, for anything. You know, when God confronted Adam, well, the woman you gave me did it. You know, pass the buck. That's what we want to do. But it's not God's fault. God didn't do it. And so let's keep on praising him. Hebrews 13 and verse 15, we're told, Therefore by him, Christ, let us offer continually the sacrifice of praise to God. Now, yes, we come together week by week and we assemble here and we seek to praise God. This is not the only place we can praise God. This is not the only place we should praise God. 
We can praise him at home. We can praise him at work. We have opportunities sometimes waking up in the middle of the night and we can praise God. And we ought always to praise him. Ought always to honor his name. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 20. An interesting statement. Giving thanks always for all things to God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. No, everything in life that happens to us is not going to necessarily be good. And you say, well, how do you thank God when things are not going well? Well, simply we can thank God that things are not going worse than they were. There's always something to thank God for. All we simply have to do is look around. Of all people on earth, people in this nation are probably the most blessed people. And we ought to be the most thankful people. Well, thirdly, we need to keep on fighting. Yeah, we are in a war. I don't think... Some people have gotten the memo on that yet. But yes, we are in a war. We have an enemy. And Paul tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12 to fight the good fight of faith. Now, as Christians, we're not going out seeking trouble. That's not part of what we do. But we have an enemy out there, Satan, the devil, whichever you wish to call him. And he is always seeking a fight. He's always ready to go to war. And when we're at our weakest or when we are on the least guard of our lives, that's when he likes to strike. That's when he likes to come in. When we get comfortable When everything seems to be rolling along well, then here comes the devil to try to knock the props out from under us. And so we are at war. Peter tells us we're to be sober and vigilant. We've got to be on alert at all times because we don't know when the enemy is going to come. But the Bible does assure us of something about this enemy. If we fight, if we keep on fighting, there are going to be some very positive results. James 4 and verse 7 says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. He's a coward. He's a coward. Loves to hit from behind. Loves to do things of that nature. But he's a coward. And when we stand up and fight him, when we put on the armor of God from Ephesians chapter 6, we are equipped with everything we need to whip him. And so keep on fighting. Next, keep on working. And Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, we're told, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. I remember years ago, we had a gospel meeting here. And the preacher said, the way it looks sometimes in the church, we need to rewrite one of the hymns we sing. And the idea of the hymn was, of course, getting out and working, being active, being involved. And he said, instead of bringing in the chiefs, we probably need to sing that song, Sitting in the Pews. And that's what a lot of people want to do. But as Christians, that's not our place. Sitting in the pews, yes, that is something we do from time to time. But it's not all we do. Every one of us has jobs. Every one of us has a means we can contribute to the great work of the Lord. Sometimes we have to look for it. 
but it's there. And God will help us fulfill that if we seek that job and find it. In Titus 3 and 14, Paul reminds us, and let our people learn to maintain good works to meet urgent needs. Well, guess what? Those urgent needs are out there every single day of our lives. And so we learn to keep things going, to maintain, to keep it rolling day in, day out, doing the work. And let's realize whose work we're doing. We're not working for some human corporation. We are working for the greatest being who has ever lived. And the greatest opportunity that has ever been given to a people to be involved in the work of God. Next, we need to be loving and keep on loving. Romans 13, verse 8. Oh, no one anything but to love one another. Wow. What a far-reaching, powerful statement that is. Your debt to people, to all people, no matter who they are, no matter where they are, is to love them. And, you know, we want to kind of get uncomfortable with that and think, whoa, wait a minute about this. Jesus did. And if our Savior did, we are to do likewise. He loved those people that were crucifying him. And we never know. You know, I've always asked the question, how many in the crowd on Sunday praising Jesus were in the crowd on Friday calling for his crucifixion? But let's take that one step further. How many were in the crowd on Pentecost? and heard and responded to the gospel because Jesus loved. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Man, I think this summarizes us as Christians, or it should. It says, let all that you do be done in love. Wow. You know what's great about that passage? When we love what we do, Oh, it makes it ever so much easier to do. You know, what I'm trying to advise college students, I tell them to go out and find a career that you love. So do something that you really, really want to do. Because if you have just a job to have a job, it's going to be drudgery every single day. Well, if we love the Lord and we love the work of the Lord and we love the Lord's people, wow, see how much easier it becomes. And then living. And I'm going to add two words to this one for Christ. We need to keep on doing that. 2 Corinthians 5.15. This is a telling verse. It's one we don't talk about enough. He says, and if he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again. You hear that? Because Christ died for us. We die with him in baptism. And Paul's telling us here, because of that, we die to self. No longer what I want. No longer my will. Hey, that's what got me in trouble in the first place, doing what I want in my will. Now it's all about Christ. We live for him. We live for his honor, for his glory for his praise. Literally, we live in such a way that people see Jesus in us. And that's very, very important in our world today. Philippians 1.21, 
Paul gives us a good philosophy for life. He says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Paul's saying, as long as I'm alive on this earth and breathe the rest of the context, I'm going to serve Christ. I'm all about Christ. That's what matters. That's what's important. And then when I die, wow, it's going to be gain. Because Christ has made so many wonderful and special promises. So why would I do a lesson like this? Keep on. Keep on doing these things. And there's a very simple reason for it. Your labor, what you do for Christ, is not in vain. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10 for God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love. God doesn't forget what his children are doing. God knows. What does Revelation 14, 13 teach us? Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And we need to make sure we've got some labors in the cause of Christ so those labors follow us, but they will. But maybe the passage that summarizes it all is 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty-eight, And I find it fascinating that this passage appears in a context talking about the final triumph, the resurrection of the dead. Paul says, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. So keep on. Keep on. You're not wasting time. You're doing something vital. You're doing something important. Because it's the Lord's work. And the Lord's work really is the most important thing of all. But maybe you've never signed on. Maybe you've never enlisted in the Lord's army. Maybe you need to do that today by believing on Jesus Christ with all of your heart by repenting of your sins, by confessing your faith before those gathered here and being buried in the waters of baptism for the forgiveness of your sins. Or if you're here today and you just simply need the prayers of the church, we encourage you to come as we stand together and sing. And you are
Well, good morning again. Good morning. Uh, today's the first day of spring. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> nope, not going to say it. A few announcements uh, from the bulletin. We see that Emma Merrill's surgery went well, so rejoice with that. Um, Perky Brown will be having hip surgery next Wednesday, so keep her in your prayers as well. Heather Maybe has been diagnosed with cancer in several, several parts of her body, so please pray with her for all that she's going through. Um, our sympathy is extended to Jack Powell and his family and the passing of his brother on Friday. And... Um, Beth Duggar says, David Young, he is the minister of North Boulevard Church of Christ in Murfreesboro, has serious health issues, so please keep him in our, in our prayers as well. The um, Kimball Christian Academy teacher's wish list is on the KCA website in an Amazon link, and so um, help out there if you can. And then we're having a closed giveaway on Saturday from 10 to 12 in the multi-purpose room. 10 to 2. 10 to 2. Okay. 10 to 2. And we need uh, workers to help get ready on Friday, but Billy told me we also need workers on Thursday. See Connie for details. And that's all I've got. Are there any others? John? Number 138. 138. After this, Daniel's going to lead us in prayer. It's in the first verse of the new song. Shall we say it works? It fills my soul to his song of praise. Father God, we thank you again for this, this beautiful day and this, this opportunity that we've had to gather together in this place as your family. Father, we, we pray that the, the things that we've said and done here have been in accordance with your word, that your name has been lifted that you have been glorified and that we have been edified. Father, as we go into the field, 
Help us to not grow faint. Help us to not give up and to not give in. Remind us that you did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. Father, be with us. Watch over us. Strengthen us and guide us. And it's through him that we pray. Amen.